Ignition sequence start. Six, five, four, three, two, one, zero. Liftoff. We have a liftoff. Hey everybody, this is the Digital Asset Investor and my wa my dishwasher went out about a week ago and they had to order a part. So I've been eating on paper plates for a week and they were coming to fix it today and the guy that was going to fix it has called in sick to work for the second day in a row. Not good. I'm tired of eating on paper plates. <laughs> by the way, by the way, speaking of dishwashers, um, I was talking to uh, the guy at Procoin News yesterday, and um, and so that is going to be released through uh, the um, the email newsletter that I do jointly with Procoin News. Here, here that is, and this is by the way that you can click on. The, this is pinned to the top of my Twitter feed, and I'll also put it at the top of the description of this video if you want to sign up for that newsletter. That'll be the only place where you can hear the interview. And they're going to put that out, I think, around Friday. So I did that yesterday. It was pretty good. I was on there for probably an hour. Okay. Um, and I talked to him about, uh, he was laughing about me. Um, I don't know if that was before we recorded or what, but he was laughing about me hating unloading the dishwasher. Check this out. OPEC oil will no longer be purchased exclusively in U.S. denominations such as Federal notes, treasury bonds, bilateral agreements uh, between OPEC and nations other than the U.S. will now be inter will now be entertained. It appears Bretton Woods two ended today. Folks, think petrodollar. I've been waiting for I've been waiting for today, knowing it was pre-planned and coming today in Riyadh at the China Arab Summit. President Xi of China formally invited the Arab nations to trade oil and gas in yuan. On the Shanghai Exchange, now the way now the way diplomacy works because it seems to have been forgotten in the West is that Z Z or Z I whatever you said would not have made the invitation unless all the Arab states gathered in Riyadh and particularly Saudi Arabia as host had already agreed as a matter of joint policy to take action. Folks, I've I've played you the video a thousand times. I've told you this is all about the petrodollar and. The petrodollar is all about the standard of living in the United States of America. There's a lot going on. And this guy says it had to be done this way. And then shows this picture. Now remember, Henry Kissinger right here is the one who cut the deal for the petrodollar when he was in the Nixon administration. He, which basically said that they agreed that the Saudis would, uh, that everybody would have to buy their oil with U.S. dollars. Uh, and in return, the U.S. would protect Saudi Arabia. Okay? So, and then there's this. Western sanctions on Russia triggered a pur purposeful domino effect, allowing for an eventful dissolvement of the Kissinger Agreement, which established all OPEC oil to be purchased in U.S. denominations. Done this way, the U.S. saves face to the extent possible, avoiding potential war. What did I tell you? I was told a long time ago. Maybe two years ago, somebody told me that this was that XRP was created to prevent World War III. I was told that. Okay, I don't have sources, but someone told me that. Okay, that XRP was created to prevent World War III and it was to replace the petrodollar. In other words, a bridge currency would be a, a compromise of sorts. In other words, the United States says, well. We know we can't be the world reserve currency forever, but how about a bridge currency? That'd be a nice, a nice little um, compromise that prevents World War III. True story. Then there's this. Central banks globally have accumulated gold reserves this year at a pace never seen since 1967 when the U.S. dollar was still backed by the precious metal. What I believe is going to happen, folks, I believe a lot of these CBDCs, or maybe all of them, are going to have a some kind of a gold backing and then you got to ask yourself a question what would the bridge currency to the world do how would you what would you do there that's the question um, but gold will be a central part of this because gold to me is it's god's money and it's truth 
okay, versus the fiat system, which is why I got a gold sponsor called Glint. And I, I purchase gold in my Glen account so that I can, it's spendable gold with my debit MasterCard. And I also purchase physical gold. The link to that's in the top of the description. You can click on that and tell them DAI sent you. Then look who, look who Squawk Box has on to help Squawk Box and Andrew Ross Sorkin try to rationalize SBF not being a bad guy. Around situations From what like you've this. seen thus far, maybe unfair to prejudge given that we don't have all the facts. What do you think? I, I, look, I think there was obviously a great deal of bad behavior here that we would think was bad behavior. From our perspective as to how you run a financial institution in the United States, but also from a, from a general perspective right. in, ha in how you handle it. I want you to th let's think this through while you listen to his BS. This is the same guy that dropped the lawsuit on Ripple, okay? Which is a company that was started in the U.S. SBF was operating out of the U.S. He had a, several companies that were registered in Delaware. This guy knows full well that SBF issued the FTT token. And the SEC, if you're doing any business inside of the United States, they can go after you for the FTT token or whatever else. So why is he rationalizing this when he... When he filed a lawsuit and then left against XRP. When these guys, nobody's ever accused them of fraud, but this guy, everybody's accusing of fraud. And these guys think it's perfectly all right. Well, we just don't know yet. We don't have all the evidence. <laughs> Unbelievable. What about the idea that some of these laws that we have here around securities and all sorts of other things that might otherwise, things that, that maybe happened would have constituted fraud or worse here mm -hmm. wouldn't there well let, oh let me God. let me say this we have an incredibly well developed up. and rigorous legal system around securities markets securities issuance securities trading all of those things but it, its basis is in the common law and you know outside the united states there is still a fair amount of common law built around fraud and the like what does our securities law system do it creates processes, requirements, transparency, inspect. Now remember, when this whole drama started with the ETH gate and all that, remember the first place Gary, uh, that uh, Jay Clayton went to speak? He went to Stanford to speak. He was on stage and who was in the audience? Katie Hahn asked him a question. Well, who are the standard professors? Both of Sam Bankman Fried's parents. Katie Hahn said that she literally studied under them and knew Sam as a baby. Do you see why these people, this is one big club and you ain't in it, okay? They're trying to protect their own is what's going on here. Now, moving along, but but see, this guy's perfectly okay. It says, 50K margarita bill, FTX workers stiff Jimmy Buffett restaurant. I've been to Jimmy Buffett restaurant and I've had a Jimmy Buffett margarita and I like them. In fact, that's one of the ProCoin News questions is what kind of margarita do I like? And how many can I drink? <laughs> I think that was another question. Um, but anyway, uh, so Becky Quick says, Jimmy Buffett tells me this story is true. No joke. So that'll be funny. Now, meanwhile, while while Sam Bankman Freed is, they're trying to polish his image and make it look like, oh, well, maybe he didn't break any tech, laws technically in the United States. Meanwhile, now they're going to go after, it looks like they're wanting to go after Binance. Binance locks withdrawals from for some accounts amid what CEO calls just market behavior. Then it says the U.S. Justice Department is considering charging Binance for money laundering and criminal sanctions violations. Remember, CZ Binance is the one that initiated the takedown of FTX by announcing he was going to sell all of his FTT tokens. So these people have a, settled, uh, a score to settle. Um, then Max Kaiser says this. Now, I'm not going to say this word because you're not allowed to say it on YouTube, which is so, so sick, by the way, because there's a lot of true stories that I could tell you about that, but you're not allowed to. What has happened to the United States of America? <laughs> we can't even tell the, a true story that happened to me about that without this video being taken down. That is sick. We... we some people, we have a country that needs to be fixed or we won't have this country anymore. Um, said so just like attacked this after this, uh, to deflect and look, uh, they're doing something. 
The U.S. will attack Binance after, after the reveal that Sam Bankman freed FTX through several elections, stole $8 billion, and corrupted scores of U.S. politicians and, and venture capitalists. And this is a zero hedge thing saying they're going to charge some people at Binance. Um, and then I, I had to tweet this because I retweeted that and I said, but they're going to kindly ask SBF to have a hot, to get a hot cup of coffee and do a zoom with Congress from the Bahamas, right? I mean, that is how sick and twisted our country has become. CoinGecko key dates to watch this week, 13th December, US CPI, 14th December, FOMC rate decision, 15th December, Bank of uh, England rate decision, 15th December, ECB rate uh, decision. What dates are you watching? Then Eleanor Terrett says, 1213, Sam Bankman free to testify remotely before the Democrats, uh, this one of the committees, let me see, um, U.S. House Committee on Finance. Key inflation data, 1214 results from December Fed meeting, 1216 FTX creditor hearing, deadline to avert government shutdown. A lot going on this week. John Deaton did an interesting uh, thread. Is Ripple going to lose because library lost? He said, I predicted if library lost, two things would happen. One, the SEC would rush the decision to judge Torres to act as if the Supreme Court ruled. And two, people would come out of the shadows and claim Ripple and XRP will share the same fate. And that's kind of what we've seen over the last week. Well, I'm going to, I'm not going to, I mean, this thread is long, 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 but I'm going to show you this. He says, I maintain the SEC snatched defeat from the jaws of victory because of the grossly overbroad theory it's selected to go with. Others can reasonably disagree, but at least I give you an announce of what I believe what, what I do. When, when people say Ripple will lose, what exactly does it mean? For example, I think it's possible that the judge could find specific transactions violated the law. For example, Ripple sent 100 people a brochure in 2014. It's possible the judge could decide that that was an offer of an unregistered security. Is that a win for the SEC? I still firmly believe the judge will deny the SEC's motion for summary judgment as it is written. Um, if I'm wrong, I'm wrong. It won't be the first time, but we can go back and see how I was wrong because I laid it out. So I think John thinks that, as Jeremy Hogan says, that there will be, this is based on just reading between the lines, I think that there's most likely a splitting the baby type moment here where they say some of them were securities back in whatever, 2014, but not now and not going forward. That's kind of what I think we're looking at. Now, this is one of those, I'll put this in the, um, in the conspiracy file partially, but it's interesting enough, I wanted to show it to you. Listen to this, this is from the official cool guy of the Digital Asset Investor Channel, watch this. This segues in beautifully to uh, to the ISO coins, particularly XRP, uh, I don't know if you have much to say about it or not, but um, the, the CEO of Ripple associated with XRP was in uh, Antarctica. Antarctica with, with um, Klaus Schwab and uh, Christine Lagarde, uh, several months back, which was kind of a red flag for anyone that's invested in it. But at the same time, is this was this the passing of the hat? Was this some sort of ceremony? And the larger picture is, what the hell's going on in Antarctica? <laughs> yeah. I mean, all the details of that meeting and others that have gone down there have that's actually a good been question. kept what is from going on in Antarctica. <laughs> um, I'm unaware exactly of what was discussed, but it almost certainly related to the new financial system and XRP. XRP's role in that. Whether or not that was coming from a white hat perspective or a black hat perspective, I can't really attest to. It's my understanding that XRP will be used as essentially a conduit for instantaneous money transfer simply because it's very well secured. It's end-to-end -end encrypted. That's my understanding too. Um, and the infrastructure is predominantly there already for it. Regarding Antarctica, Antarctica is a very fun place. There's a reason that it's called the Antarctic Ring. There's a reason that um, you've heard the term ice wall. There's a reason that um, 56 countries banned pri travel, even private self-funded travel to the Antarctic shelf. You know, there's a, there's a conspiracy, it's pretty interesting um, conspiracy theory that um, after World War II or, or at the end of World War II, 
that a lot of the bad guys, there, there's a, some kind of a safe haven uh, area in Antarctica where it's not ice and that there's like a, a, a place that you can, have, you can actually go and live. And that there's no fl- fly zones around certain areas so that nobody can get. But that's purely conspiracy stuff, I guess. So um, what they're but what what they're talking about is that uh, back in I think it was December 2021, David Schwartz went to Antarctica, and I think Brad Garlinghouse may have tweeted about uh, putting a parka on or something like that. Um, and they're saying that um, that Christine Lagarde and um, Doctor Evil went up there too. I don't know about that, um, but and I, I can't remember if Brad Garlinghouse seems like he did tweet something about a park around that same time. And then there was this. Okay, this is um, from December. Uh, this is from not too long ago. Here's a SpaceX Starlink giving ICE research team uninterrupted con- connectivity in the field of Antarctica for the first time ever. Um, Starlink is a game changer. I agree. And I've, I've been saying, I think that there's going to be nodes, probably XRP, XLM nodes on those Starlink satellites if there's not already. And I also think on this Antarctica thing, I wouldn't be surprised if there's nodes there too. Um, and then John Deaton makes a very good point. Um, breaking SEC Chair Gensler must testify before Congress says Tom Emmer. And John Deaton said, yes. But when he says we won't talk about specific token platform or project, force his hand. Otherwise, it's just another dog at Congress, Congressional Dog and Pony Show. Tom, get documents and emails on specific tokens and platforms. All right, uh, let me see what I got here. Um, this is interesting. This guy says, um, he says, by claiming XRP as a security, SEC is giving the token property is, properties it doesn't, uh, doesn't have and confusing purchasers. Purchasers of securities expect rights. Tokens are digital commodities with no, claim, with no uh, claims, I'm assuming, even, on an enterprise. The illusion is actually creating a false narrative. Okay, and John says a very nuanced but important point that I haven't articulated enough myself. Gary Gensler and the SEC are creating an expectation by token holders that they have some legal or financial rights in a company by simply owning a token, thus creating more confusion in the market. You know, when I read this, what I'm sitting here thinking is, what if what if what the SEC was really trying to do all along was to create that confusion so that if it if XRP was called a security, then all of a sudden mass lawsuits would be filed against Ripple, thus destroying the company because people are laying claim to equity through their XRP tokens. What if that was part of what they're trying to do? That is how sick these people are. I'm the digital asset investor. I'm not an investment advisor. This is for entertainment purposes only. Please subscribe, hit the like button, tell your friends and family that these people are really, really sick.